last year I made a video listing reasons why the Wii U would fail and why it would succeed. Back when I made this video, we had so few informations that I felt the video needed to be redone. And now that the Wii U is releasing very soon, should you get one or should you wait for something else? I'm Nico BBQ, and here are 5 reasons why the Wii U may succeed and 5 reasons why it may fail. Here we go! Number 5 Success Back when the Wii U was first announced, there weren't a lot of titles that got me excited apart from Nintendo's first party titles. But as we learned from the Wii, it requires more than a solid first party lineup to please the hardcore gaming audience. Well, it looks like Nintendo learned from its mistakes and got third party developers to make great games for their new system. Out of nowhere, Bayonetta 2 was announced, and as a fellow Bayonetta fan, this makes me really happy. This game alone may make me own a Wii U system. Zombie U from Ubisoft looks promising and I hope it delivers the horror feeling. Since we can't count on the Resident Evil franchise for that anymore. But that's a whole other story. Number 5. Fail. The Wii U has 23 games planned for launch day which is two more than the Wii originally had. However, just like the Wii, most of those games are not very impressive. Nintendo brings out Nintendo Land, which in my opinion is just a bunch of tech demos. New Super Mario Bros. U. It's gonna be good, don't get me wrong, but let's be honest, if you've played one game in the new Super Mario franchise, you've played them all. That's pretty much it for Nintendo. Now Ubisoft has Zombie U, which looks pretty cool, but after the Red Steel incident on the Wii, I'm not setting my hopes that high. Aside from that, you'll get a bunch of ports like Assassin's Creed 3, Batman, Call of Duty, Ninja Gaiden. It can look promising, but if you are like me and own a current gen console, such as PlayStation or Xbox, chances are that you've played most of those games already. Number 4 Success Community may be the most important aspect of pretty much anything. With the Wii, you had to exchange friend codes to have your Miis walking on your friend's Mii parade. Yay! Uh, Nintendo began to figure it out a little more with the 3DS, giving players the ability to know what your friends are playing and giving you the option to join them. That's starting to get cool, but Nintendo really figured it out like a boss with the new Miiverse. Miiverse can be accessed at any time during gameplay without interrupting your games. With Miiverse, you can talk with other players and help each other if you are stuck on a certain part of a game. What is even better is that Miiverse is not only for the Wii U, you will be able to use Miiverse on your mobile devices such as your iPhones, iPads and even your 3DS later on. Now that is what I call building a community. On paper that sounds awesome. Now let's just hope Nintendo deliver the goods. Number 4 Fail When the Wii was first released, it cost $249.99 and was bundled with Wii Sports. It was an instant success, only 250 for the revolution, the new experience everybody was talking about. Whoa, I remember picking a Wii at lounge for that price, and I had a lot for my money. The Wii U on the other end is priced at $299.99 for the basic set, which doesn't include any games, so you'll have to pick one up for 60 bucks. This brings the total a hundred dollars more expensive than the Wii. Sure, it isn't the same thing and most fans will pick it up, but casual gamers and families might want to pass on the offer, considering it might just be another fad like the Wii. Number 3. Success Something totally unexpected came out of the Wii U press conference back in September. And I name Nintendo TV. You were wondering what that TV button on your gamepad did, right? 
Well, wonder no more. Nintendo TV gives Wii U owners the ability to watch shows online by using streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon Video, Hulu and many others. It's a pretty neat feature. Sure, it's not the selling point for the Wii U, but it's great nonetheless. Number 3. Fay. When Nintendo announced Miiverse, they did it by showing us a really cheesy trailer featuring... non-specific action figure. I see him! I beat him! I beat him! Did you hear that non-specific action figure? I beat him! I beat him! I know it's pointless and dumb, but I would have loved to have my own non-specific action figure bundled in with the Wii U, just for the sake of being dumb or funny. But no. Number 2. Success. Usually when you play a multiplayer game, every player have access to pretty much the same things, you're all competing to achieve a certain goal. However, the Wii U introduces something new. Depending on which controller you use, the gameplay will change. For example, if you play a game with the Wii U gamepad, you will be able to use the screen directly on the gamepad to try new things that other players using the Wii U Pro controller or the Wiimote won't be able to do. The Wii changed gaming by introducing motion controls. And now, the Wii U introduced you to a tablet controller hybrid. And once again, Nintendo changes the gaming world! Number 2. Fail. My main gripe with the Wii and with the 3DS is the waiting time between blockbuster games. For example, I hadn't touched my Wii for at least over a year before Zelda Skyward Sword came out. The same things applies with my 3DS. It was in its traveling case for over two months before new Super Mario Bros. 2 was released. You can't only count on Nintendo to fill your gaming library, you have to rely on third-party developers, something that the Wii and the GameCube didn't have enough. Hopefully, the Wii U will have more content coming from both Nintendo and third-party devs. Number 1. Success. The number one reason why the Wii U can succeed has to be the Wii U gamepad. After all, that's how the Wii U was first introduced. People were actually not even sure if the Wii U was just a new controller or a new console. While we now know that it is indeed a new console, stronger than ever before, the major change comes in the Wii U gamepad, which seems to create thousands of new opportunities for game developers. Aside from being able to use the gamepad separately from the TV, you can now display menus and various informations without cluttering the main game screen. You can totally change the way a game is meant to be played. For example, Zombie U has you looking on your gamepad to choose your items while the action is still going on the main TV. This is just a simple example, but it's a great taste of things to come. Number 1. Fail. The main innovation is the Wii U gamepad. We made that pretty clear. But what happens when someone innovates? Well, everybody copied the innovation, obviously. So, the Wii U isn't even out yet that Sony and Microsoft have reacted and offer a similar experience, or are gonna offer one. The PS Vita and the PlayStation 3 interact together, and Sony said they will be pushing the interaction between those two in future games. Last E3, Microsoft announced the Smart Glass, which is a tablet that communicates with your Xbox. While they are all a little bit different from the Wii U, let's be honest, this is kind of a ripoff, just like Kinect and PlayStation Move copied the Wiimote. Why can't anyone come up with original content without getting ripped off the year after? This makes me sad, it's just killing the innovation. Now that I've given you 5 reasons why the Wii U may succeed and 5 reasons why the Wii U may fail, I wanna hear what you guys think. Are you guys gonna pick up a Wii U at launch, or are you gonna wait, or are you just never gonna pick one up, and why? Just tell me in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time!